Hi everyone, welcome back to XCA, Xcoding with Alvian. In this video, we're going to learn on how to hide a public API key for third-party providers from iOS or any front-end application. Hiding third-party provider API key such as OpenAI ChatGPT is one of the issues we always encounter when building front-end application on iOS or Android or web. There are many methods such as obfuscation to hide the API key in your code. But eventually, the API key will be used when making HTTP requests to the API provider, which is susceptible to the man-in-the-middle attack. We're going to use OpenAI ChatGPT API as the example for this tutorial. Instead of storing the OpenAI API key in the client and make a direct API call to the OpenAI ChatGPT endpoint, we will deploy our own serverless proxy server that the client will hit. This proxy server will authenticate the user and proxy the request to the OpenAI API. We will use Firebase Cloud Functions second gen for the HTTP endpoint and Firebase Authentication for managing users in client as well as verifying the user authentication token in the server side. So before we begin, let me show you a quick demo of the things that we are going to build in this video. Okay, so here, let me also bring this terminal showing the logs of the localhost Firebase Cloud functions using the emulator. Okay, so all the logs to the proxy server will be shown in here. Okay, and here I have the iOS app that will be making the request for the chat to the proxy server in this case to this local host okay so here at the initial screen of the application we have this email and password so we need to sign in before we can prompt the chat gpt okay so i haven't created a user let me just click this not a member sign up okay let me provide my email okay password just a simple password Test one two three four. Okay. Let me just sign up to create the user for this email, and then it will automatically sign into the app. So here we have the ChatGPT uh, screen where we can prompt the ChatGPT. So I have also created a video tutorial on building this. I provided the link at the description below if you are interested. Okay. So here let me just make a prompt. How to hide API key? in an iOS app okay send and there you go it's streaming the answer from the proxy server if you see so yeah this is the log chat requester alvianlosari at gmail.com is making a chat request and then this is the payload that I send in the request body okay how to hide API key in an iOS app and there you go that's the answer. So yeah, the user need to authenticate and then the proxy server will authenticate the user based on the Firebase authentication token that it sent. So if you see here, if I just kill the app and open it again, it will show the screen because I'm currently logged in. And then if I log out and then I kill the app, it will basically ask me again to log in okay so yeah basically this is the application that we are going to build and basically there is no open ai api key stored in the client side and no direct api call to the open api api endpoint client will just hit the proxy with the firebase user current user authentication token okay let me just close this terminal as well as the simulator. So we, before we begin to code, please navigate to this GitHub repository. I provide the link at the description below to download the starter project for this tutorial, okay? Select this starter tag and then just select this and download the zip to your local machine. So it contains the folder for the iOS application containing the ChatGPT app that we have built in the previous video tutorial. So here, I also include all the authentication views 
to sign in, sign up, as well as the observable object to handle the sign up and the sign in flow to the Firebase authentication SDK. Okay, so if you want to learn on how to build this authentication views, the flow, you can also check this article that I have written back then at March 2020. So here, I have omitted the sign-in with Apple for this tutorial, so to make it simple. But here, if you want to learn on how to build this step by step, you can follow this uh, written tutorial. I'll, pro I'll have provided the link at the description below as well for you to check. Okay. And the next thing is you just need to also sign in to Firebase console and download the Firebase CLI as well as the Firebase emulator. I think for the Firebase CLI, you will need to install Node.js 18, at least for now. And for the Firebase emulator, you need to install GDK 11, at least, okay, for the minimum requirement to run those. So please do it, check the Firebase documentation on how to install the CLI as well as the emulator to your local machine. So I have installed all of them to my machine and now let's, we can just begin and start coding. Okay, let's begin by opening the terminal and navigate to the directory where you have downloaded the starter project. So here, this is the starter project directory. So here, let me just set this to full screen and then create a new directory okay, to host the Firebase project. I'm going to give it a name of uh, openai-proxy and then cd to the uh, folder. And then in here, I can simply type Firebase in it. So make sure you have installed the Firebase CLI before you do this. Okay, it will show this Firebase, your robot to initialize a Firebase project in that directory. And then here we need to select the features that we want. Okay, there are other features, but in the in this tutorial we only need the functions, okay, as well as the emulators. Okay, these two. Select this by uh, pressing space on the keyboard. Can okay. now enter. And then here you can also select your existing project if you have. For me, I'm going to show you uh, a new project. How to do it using a new project. Okay. Now you need to specify unique project ID. I'm going to give it a name of XCI OpenAI Proxy iPhone 77. Okay. What we would like to call your project ID defaults, just enter. Okay, it's going to create the GCP project. Okay, your Firebase project is ready. This is the ID and this is the name. So this is the console link to the dashboard. Okay, we can try to open this link. Okay. So let's just do the enable the authentication for the email and password. So I'm getting started in here. And then for the sign-in method, just select email password and then enable this. Okay, I've added the email and password provider for this project. Okay, let's go back. Here function setup, we need to set up the language that we are going to use, the environment. So for the Node.js, we have the JavaScript, TypeScript, and the other one, there's also a Python if you want to use Python. But for this example, I'm just going to use Node.js with TypeScript, okay? Do you want to use ASLint to catch horrible books and for style? So I'm just going to select no for this tutorial. And then you want to install dependence with, with npm? Yes, this will install all the dependencies such as Firebase admin and etc. Okay, the emulator setup. Which Firebase emulator do you want to set up? So, for the tutorial, we only need the functions emulator. Okay. Functions emulator, enter. Which port do you want to use? Just use the default one, 5001. Would you like to enable the emulator UI? No, we don't need. We would like to download the emulators now. Just select yes. Okay, we have created the 
your best project and then what we can do is just opening this in visual studio code okay so now we are already inside visual studio code let's use the built-in terminal in here control tilt okay and now let's navigate to the functions folder so here in the functions folder we have the not JS project with the TypeScript configuration so it has this JS config the JSON as well as the package station containing all the dependencies so it also provides the script serve basically we run the npm run build and then start the emulators Firebase emulators okay so we will use this npm run serve to start the emulator and all the dependencies currently it has two by default Firebase admin and Firebase function okay so we, as we are going to make the API request to the OpenAI API we are going to use a HTTP client for this project so let's install the dependency npm install dash dash uh, I don't even save and then we're going to use access for this okay so now it added this access as the dependencies to our project and the next thing is inside these functions just create a new file and then give the name of dot env so basically we are going to store our environment variable inside this env file okay so first one is the chat url so this is the url for the chat gpt endpoint i'm going to store this in the environment variable okay so this will be https api dot open open ai dot com slash v1 slash chat slash completions okay and the next one is i'm not recommending this but i'm just going to show you the initial way we are going to access the api key okay so later i'm going to use a uh, service google secret manager to store the api key okay but for now i'm just going to store the api key inside this folder so let me copy my open ai chat gpt key okay so this is my api key so one of the disadvantage of using this dot n variable is basically you you need to handle not to check this environment variable to the source control right otherwise it will be exposed in your uh, repository okay so i'm not recommending to use this uh, approach there will be a better approach using the secret manager i will show you later on how to do it okay okay so we have the dot env now we can go to this index.ts folder so there are several uh, comments in here let's just remove those we are not going to use this command okay and let's begin creating the request handler for the http function okay so the first thing that we're going to do is just to uh, import axios let's just use require for axios and then let's grab the api key from the dot env so we can just use this process dot env and the name the variable name which is the api key okay let me make this a bit bigger the size okay i think this looks good and then the endpoint okay process dot env dot chat underscore url okay so we are not hard coding any of those values to the uh, code itself and then now to basically we can just export a const which will be our http function okay we're going to use this on request which is from the firebase functions v2 gen2 functions https okay and request so here we can pass the handler we're going to make it async it contains two parameters request and response okay
okay basically the request will be sent by the client and then we should also provide the response to them okay the first thing that we want to check is the rack dot method okay so we need to check if it is not a post method we're going to just lock an error okay lock logger dot error okay this is just for debugging this uh, built in firebase logger invalid http method okay and then we're going to pass the method here for the debugging in the console okay and then we're going to send the to the client the rest dot status 400 okay and then send not supported so user need to use the post method when hitting this endpoint okay and then we can simply return continuing on let's first uh, create a try catch block okay and in here let's look at a const json let's grab the body Rack that body and then in here for the sake of debugging let's just lock this as an info chat payload and then pass the json as a second parameter and then let's create a const headers which is basically a json so the first key will be content type so this header will be sent to the open ai endpoint Content type will be application slash JSON, and the second one will be authorization. Here we need to pass the let's use this tick, okay, and then bearer, and then just pass this API key using the JavaScript string interpolation, okay. So content type application JSON authorization bearer API key. Okay. Scroll. So let's handle the catch first. Okay. So in case there is an error there, let's just grab the error. And then just lock it. Logger that error. And then chat error. Passing error dot message. And then here we can send the rest of status. Just send like 400 and then pass the JSON. Error containing the error dot message. Okay. And then here, so basically, uh, what we need to pass is must be similar to this. Okay. So as we are going to hit the uh, this endpoint, right? Open AI. So here, if you want it to be streaming, there's this to mimic the effect seen in ChatGPT text. It's literally set the stream parameter to true. Okay. So we need to set the stream, pass the stream as true. So we need additional handling for stream. So we need to check, right? If the JSON sent by the client contain this stream which is a boolean right if the json uh, content a stream key then basically we if the json constant if the json dot stream is true then we can basically just set the rest header okay rest set header and then in here first one the content type we're going to set set this as text hyphen hyphen stream okay indicating to the client this is an hyphen stream and then let me just copy this four times and then make the modification second one is the transfer hyphen encoding 
so this needs to be chunked okay of the value and then also the cache control okay let's provide no hyphen cache and then comma mass hyphen revalidate and the last header key is connection let's just pass this close okay and then now we have set the header response header for the stream case let's grab the response by making an async await call using axios using this post method and then pass the endpoint as well as the json the body and then let's pass these options contain the headers and we also need to tell the axios that that this is a stream okay response type from the openai is stream okay now we got the response what we need to do is just to basically call this response dot data this is also a stream okay it's done by axios this response we can just pipe the stream response dot data dot pipe to the actual ras from this on request handler okay this will basically handle the streaming to the client okay and next is for the normal non-streaming case it's going to be very simple const response you can simply invoke axios dot post passing the endpoint json as well as only the headers okay and then we can simply invoke rest dot status response dot status and passing the JSON's response dot data. Okay, that's it for the non-streaming handler. Okay, so this is the proxy server. Basically, we get the request, rec and request, check the method, make sure it is paused, get the JSON body, and construct the headers that we will be sent to OpenAI. Set the if the JSON content the stream and it is true, set the header, content type, text server stream, transfer encoding chunk, cache control, no cache, must revalidate, and then connection close. And then for this post, passing this response type as stream to the Axios, and then, then just pipe the response stream to the actual response handler to the client. Okay. And then this is for the else, just invoke this await access post and then pass this rest that status the response that status from access and the data from the uh, actual and the data from the open ai api okay so this is it for the handler so we need to test this okay so in the terminal here inside this function folder just use the sudo npm run serve okay provide the password it will build and run the firebase emulators for the functions okay if you see at the function initialize at this local host port 5001 xa open a proxy slash us central one slash chat okay now let's try this using curl mm. oh there's one mistake in here, mirror a big key, there's extra column in here. You should remove it, okay? Otherwise it will throw an error, okay? So now let's just open a new terminal in here and then let me just paste this curl here. So this is the local host uh, address, as you can see in here xc open a uh, proxy 77 us central chat and here we have the header content type application json and we have the json body hello gpt4 message role user content this is a test so the first thing that i want to change in here is to set this stream to true 
Okay. Now let's try to hit this. Still try an error. I think because I need to restart the server. So Control C, and then make sure save this again. Game run serve. Okay, it should pick up a change now. Let's try again. Stream through. Nice. There you go. The response from the proxy server. Okay, it is from the open eye endpoint being proxied by the proxy server that we have created. Okay. So we can also set the stream as false to check. Okay, this is the response for non-streaming response for the chat GPT. Yeah, it works. This code for the reverse proxy works for making the API call to OpenAI chat GPT endpoint. And as you can see, the OpenAI API key is safe in here. Okay, so while the code doesn't expose the API key, I think this is still not the best, uh, the safest approach to secure the API key, okay? So now let's update this to use the Google Secret Manager, okay? It's provided uh, by the Firebase function. It's a built-in uh, method that we can use. So in here, we can just enter here and then we got a const define secret, okay? We can get this from the Firebase functions slash params. Okay, so we have this defined secret. So how to use this? Basically, let's declare this open AI key const in here, and then just invoke this defined secret, passing the Key that we are going to use store in the Google Secret Manager. Let me give it a name of OpenAI underscore key. OpenAI hyphen key. Okay. And then let's just remove this constant API key. Okay, so we have this. Now we need to pass this to the on request. So we need to pass a JSON here for the configuration. So inside this configuration JSON, let's pass these secrets okay, that will be resolved when the request runs. And then we need to pass an array. In this case, we only have one secret. Okay, open our key. Okay. And to get the API key inside the request handler, we can simply use this. And then and then in here. We can simply declare const API key and use this open API, open API key dot value. Okay, there you go. We got the API key. So we need to try to test this. Let me show the terminal again and then let me stop this and then run sudo npm run serve again and see so if you see here there is an error shown in the console fail to load function definition from source service error error 403 circuit manager api has not been used in this project so the api is not enabled for this project so we can enable this by visiting this let me try to visit this link in safari So it's open the GCP console here, circuit manager. So this is project XCA OpenAI proxy 77. Let's enable this. So I think this requires billing. Okay. So you might need to enable billing for your GCP account. I'm just use my going to use my default billing for best payment. Then enable this. Okay, it is enabled. Now we can simply navigate to the dashboard here, circuit manager. Click this. 
then click this create separate for the name make sure we use this open eye hyphen key the same that we use in the code to retrieve the secret open eye hyphen key and then the secret value so let's get it from the dot env okay this one and let's remove it from this dot env and then paste this in here okay open eye Ivan key okay looks good now let's create the secret okay created the separate open AI key the encryption is Google manage I think you can also provide your and your own encryption if you want okay now we have this let's stop this and let's try to run again npm run star and let's see if the error has been resolved or not yeah I think there are no errors now so it should load the API key from the Google Secret Manager successfully but let's try right use some curl again to see okay so it works it means it is able to retrieve that open AI key from the Google Secret Manager successfully okay so this is how we secure our open ai api key or any other third party api key using the firebase function so we have the proxy server ready from our side and the next thing is we need to add the user authentication to this okay so only the authenticated user will be able to prompt the chat gpt the first thing that we need to do to authenticate is to use the firebase admin import star as admin from firebase admin okay so we got the admin and the next thing we need to do is to invoke this admin dot initialize app okay we need to initialize initialize it first and then inside this we need to create another try catch to handle the authentication error so in the catch for this authentication error let's grab the error in here and then let's give this logger that error for debugging chat uh, chat alt and then pass the error in here and then let's just send rest.status Four or three for Biden and pass the JSON error authorization failed. Please pass the correct authentication token in the header. Okay, there you go. Now let's implement the authentication so first we need to get the header Our header in here let's just invoke the rec from the request right get the authorization in here we're going to check if the auto header is nil then we're going to throw a new error in here authorization header is not provided and then next let's grab the token id okay so we need to split this out header let's split and then basically we're going to use this bearer okay as the split and then space and then grab the, se the second element in the array okay and then we're going to check if the token ID is not there just going to throw a new error again our token is empty okay now we have the token ID what we need to do is just to basically declare this the product token okay 
so how we can how how to decode this token basically from the client quest here we need to use this admin dot auth okay and then basically invoke this verify the token id token passing the token id okay so if it is successful then it shall not throw an error and then we can simply lock this using this info and then chat requested by and here let's just uh it's not a space in here record a token dot email okay so we just lock the email of the requester chat requested by the conduct token of email for the debugging purpose okay this is for the authentication part using the firebase admin so this token id will be sent by the client using the the client itself will get the token from the firebase authentication sdk okay using the same project now let's open the terminal again so let me close this and run it again Okay, so now when we hit using this curl, as we don't have the token, we are not passing it, it should throw an 403, right? Okay, error, authorization failed. Please path, path the correct authentication token, the header. I think it's a typo here. It's going, it should be passed. Please pass the correct authentication token, the header, okay? That's it. Now we have secured this endpoint. So only the authenticated user is going to be able to uh, prompt the chat GPT. Okay. Okay. I think this is all the implementation from the proxy server side. Now we need to move to the client side to hit this proxy server using this decoded token and prompt the chat GPT. Okay. So let me again open a new terminal here and then let's go back to the root of the project here and then open this xca chat is and then open xca chat xcode approach okay this should open the project in xcode okay now let me bring the window of this application and let me give you a brief walkthrough to this project as well okay so this is the same chat gpt ios app that we have built in the previous video tutorial but in here i have added a dependency spm dependency to the firebase ios sdk in this case i'm only enabling the firebase auth sdk important to import to the project and basically and in here I've also added the application transport security, all the laboratory loads are true. So I can make an API call to the HTTP localhost, okay. And also we have this authentication folder containing all the login option, get auth token, authentication state, authentication form view, so this is for the form view for the sign in and sign up so everything is in here so we can basically use this okay so here is already providing a handler for the login to the firebase of sdk we can simply use this in our application and currently in the chat gpt api it's still making an api call to the open ai endpoint so it still require the ip key to be passed inside the ios app itself okay so now we need to update this to hit the proxy server and authenticate using the firebase auth sdk the first thing we need to do is to connect this with our firebase project so just go to your console to your project here and then select this project overview, create a new iOS application, and pass your bundle ID. 
so the bundle id you can find this in your project here signing and capabilities so this is your bundle identity file it should match the one that you're passing in this firebase at ios app okay register the app and then it will prompt you to download the google service info plist that will be needed to add it to the project so just download this okay it's already downloaded and you can simply drag and drop this google service info plist to the target here for the ios app ish okay and i think as simple as just invoking the so we have added this virus sdk here in this safe code you can simply we just need to add this virus app.configure so if you look at the sample application as we are only using this one authentication this authentication state will be the one that called the virus app to configure before we can access all this auth uh, api in the firebase we need to call this initially okay or maybe real time database as well if you use it okay first let's navigate to the excel chat gpt app so this current state of the application just show the chat gpt uh, prompt screen chat screen okay so we are going to replace this to basically show a uh, landing page to sign in if the user hasn't logged into the application okay if it is already logged in we just show the chat gpt screen so we need to abstract this out to uh, a few for the sake of cleanliness okay so let's create a swift file give the name of home view and then here i can just simply import swift ui what I need to do is just to let me just occur struct first struct uh, home view home home view which is a safe UI view and then we have the body now let me just go cut this okay okay and the next thing is we need this state object in here as well as that showing tokenizer okay let's see this one also we can just move it there to the home view as well to clean this app.swift okay home view just put it here below the home view okay, so this was all the tokenizer ship okay okay now we have moved the home view out of this root window group now what we need to do is just to basically uh, update this first we're going to use that the out state and then initialize the authentication state you see this is the one that access the firebase out sdk right for the authentication it's already using the latest observable from the observation framework okay and if you see here it exposed this several property that we can use to detect whether the user has been logged in or not so basically when it uh, initialize it's going to use the firebase out sdk out at state the change listener and whenever this state change it's going to assign this to the login user uh, property so this can be observed by the safe ui right to determine whether the user is logged in or not if it is logged in we show the home view if it is not we show the authentication view sign in and sign in view okay so as simple as that okay so here in the window group we can simply declare this uh, group and if the out state login user is not nil 
we can just show the home view okay I think we need to also pass the out state to the home view to handle the lockout state to handle the lockout mechanism so I'm going to copy this go to the home view in here I'm going to declare this as a binding okay so I'm going to pass this binding so I don't request the out state so I can pass this out states out state as a binding okay and then in else if the user is not logged in I can simply pass the authentication view and the out state okay and here just also pass the binding and how type I'm going to pass login okay and let's add a bit of animation animation is in out and transition I'm going to pass this move edge from the bottom okay and next one is inside this home view we need to add the lockout button so in here i'm going to update this toolbar item set the placement to top bar trailing i'm also going to use top bar leading in here so i think this is the new api and then i'm going to put an edge tag in here so there will be two buttons bar button items at the trailing navigation bar and then we're going to have the lockout button lockout let's set the role as destructive and then invoke out state dot sign out okay to sign out the user also set the foreground style for this to wrap okay okay we have added the lockout button as well to this uh, chat gpt screen okay the next thing is to update the chat gpt api Okay, so in here currently we use uh, the API key so now we need to find a way to pass the token from the Firebase user authentication session to this uh, XGI chat GPT API so let's update this first let's just remove this API key private lab okay let's remove it from the initialization as well From the model, I want to also update this to just use the GPT-4, the latest one. And then I'm going to pass a token provider. This should be a closure, an async closure. Okay. So let's just make it an escaping. And then here, async. And it should return an optional string. Okay. Okay, so we need to store this let's declare a far private far token provider async it's a closure as well okay so it has it accepts no parameter and then it uh, returns an optional string so now we can simply assign this token provider from the initializer to this private file okay and then for the headers we don't need we need we need to move this to the url request so we need to change this to a func that accepts a token okay and then okay just replace this can change this to token bearer token okay 
now as this is fun let's clean this a bit by moving this below the init okay okay now we have this we need to also update several things in here first one here for the send message stream that will invoke we need to get the token by invoking self uh, token provider okay await okay we need to use await as that is an async and then if it is nil we just throw token is unavailable And then when we invoke this your request, we need to pass the token. Token. Okay. We also need to let me just copy this. There's one method for the non-streaming one that also get the URL request. Okay, so yeah, we have added this. So it should now able to pass the token from the firebase to authenticate with the proxy server let's try to build first okay so now we should not pass the ipi key instead we need to pass the token provider so there's already a method here in the authentication state that we can use if you see in here at the top this get auth token so no parameter and returns a string optional it's also nicing it will get it from the auth sdk from firebase current user get id token okay so let's just pass this get auth token method okay now the build succeeded and um, one more thing is we need to update the url so Kara is making a big call to the chat gpt let's use our endpoint from the firebase emulator yeah i think this one let's copy this and replace this so it's called the reverse process server in the local host and um, i think let's just run it and test it in the simulator okay it is now running on the simulator as you can see the initial screen is this sign in screen because we have an login right so let's try to create a new user by clicking this sign up let me just create a user ovianlossary at gmail.com password test 1234 test 1234 okay sign up okay now i'm inside the app i'm signing it in now let's try to prompt the chat gpt from the local host proxy server hello sign hello how can i assist you today so let's just add what is an API key API key is wow this is nice looks good and it's you all aware of the previous context how can I secure it in pronoun client nice it is aware of the previous conversation right so <laughs> you see now it is able to answer with the use server side proxy right the most secure way to handle API keys is to use a server-side proxy. Yeah, I think also this is the safest way. Okay, instead of using of instead of using obfuscation or other things, because when you make that HTTP call, there can be a man in the middle attack, right? If you're not in the safe network environment, so I think the server-side proxy is pretty pretty safe because it is deployed in the Google Cloud infrastructure, right? So it should be safe, right? Yeah, I think we have implemented all of this. Now the last part is the deploying this function to Firebase Cloud. Okay, so let's do it.
so to deploy to firebase it's actually very very simple okay what we need to do is just let me just stop this emulator functions let's go to the root of the project here okay and basically here we can simply type firebase sudo firebase deploy okay and then pass this dash dash only functions we want to only deploy functions pass your password here so this will take some time to deploy to google cloud it's creating the resource directory build and then upload the artifact also the secret google to secret manager open an i key nice right it is completed now deploy complete create the operation and i think it's going to print the actual url mm, yeah this is the url https chat so let's try to copy this let's try this url inside our application so let's replace this localhost and actually hit the cloud okay let's add this chat path okay don't forget now let's try to build okay we already sign in let's try to send how can i assist today wow nice so this is hitting our proxy server authenticating this sign in user before it allow the access to the chat gpt nice one so okay so this is basically the end of this video tutorial as you can see we have successfully created the proxy server with the user authentication this proxy server itself is serverless okay so we don't spin up a server this is a serverless uh, server using the firebase cloud functions which http second gen so now we are able to secure our api key inside the front end applica front end application so you actually you can hit this proxy server not only from the ios app right you can use any client basically such as android or maybe web right i think firebase also provide their authentication sdk for you to integrate into the project as well ios android flutter and etc right so with this you should be able to uh, secure the open ai api key okay limit the access as well okay and in the next video tutorial i'm planning to basically explore on adding maybe like an in-app subscription where only the subscribed user is able to prompt the chat gpt right so we maybe need to add an in-app purchase to our application to enable subscription and maybe for the user that hasn't been subscribed they can basically access the free quota that we can also control using this proxy server okay so this proxy server itself open a lot of possibility right for you to add for various use case and monetization as well so yeah this is it for this video hope you enjoy like if you like subscribe to the channel if you haven't and thanks for supporting this channel from the beginning and until the next one let's keep on being a lifelong learner goodbye